Hello. It is April 21st, and it is time for Wednesday Connections. As I speak with people um, in our congregation and just friends and neighbors um, and family members, there is a bit of um, a theme of, I wouldn't call it apathy, but people are just a little bit lethargic, I think would be the word. People are tired. People are happy that we're feeling some sense of hope of, of, that we are getting close um, to being able to be together in person because of the vaccines, which is what a celebration. Greg and I are pretty close to getting our second shot next Wednesday, a week from today we get it. So we're looking forward to that. So all of us have that in, in, our, in our vision. We're really excited about it. But I'm hearing from people that we, even amid that excitement that we might come back to some kind of whatever, I don't think it's going to be an old normal, it's going to be a new normal, that there is some lethargy, that people are just tired, they're tired of um, functioning in a way that is really unusual. And so, and I just want to say that, the reason I'm stating that is that if you are one of those people who are feeling that way, I just want to make sure you know that you're not alone. It's such a human, a human response to months and months and months of being away from one another physically, particularly our incredible loving and caring community that we call Garden Street United Methodist Church. And so for today's Wednesday Connections, one of the things I um, that just came to my mind, I spend a lot of time with this book called Love is the Way, and it's by Bishop Michael Curry. And when I get into a funk and feeling kind of the disconnection is just really getting to me, I, I need more than I'm feeling like I'm getting as far as being in community with others. And maybe even I'm not even feeling God's presence, really. I'm just feeling like I'm having a hard time accessing God's presence. I pick up this book and I start reading. I just open it up to anything and Bishop Michael Curry has such great words in this in this book. But today I want to read just a, a couple of paragraphs from chapter two that is entitled Looking for God. And he has written this um, as, as two people like us, if we are a part of it, I'm not saying that you are, and I'm not saying that I am, but if we are feeling that, that sense of disconnect and feeling that sense of lethargy and feeling like maybe we're not even able to access God at the moment, it's just where we're at it in our emotional state. This is a chapter that I think really, really spoke to me about that. Um, I'm going to read a couple paragraphs. He says, Sometimes it's hard to feel God's love in everyday lives, especially when chaos descends. And I'm going to add, especially when a pandemic happens. We all have responsibilities and mundane routine, routines. Maybe you've heard the saying that a marriage is no more than two people asking each other every night, what's for dinner? Sometimes life itself feels that way. We also have challenges and frustrations from aching feet to unpaid bills to broken relationships. We have injuries and open wounds and fears about the future, all those terrifying possibilities we can't control. No, we can't always feel transcendent. We don't always have a chorus of angels in our ear. But there is good news. There is a simple way to connect to the divine any time you feel like it. If God is love and love is an action, you've only got to get out there and do it. You've got to get out there and receive it. And the easiest way to do that is to become part of a community of people who want to give and receive love, to liberate themselves from the tyranny of self, to look outward. And then he goes on in another section of chapter two that he entitles Finding Rituals for Comfort. 
that I thought that was just added on to this. He said, God may be the source of love, but people are often the vessels. Once you understand that, you also start to understand that it's the community of love we create for ourselves and for others that connects us to God. When that happens, God's there. That's God showing up. We're resting in God's hands. And then the final sentences I want to read for you. Faith communities, he says, I'd add, have hands to rest in that are especially strong. They have been the custodians to a particularly well-established toolkit, honed by centuries for those times when life, let's be honest, sucks, like when loved ones pass, and I'm going to add, when a pandemic happens. He says, I'm talking about rituals and traditions and supports to lean on when we're lost and bereft or trying to help someone who is. Rituals move us forward through grief. They're another means of resting in God's hands, resting in God's love. I share that with you today because maybe you are the person that is being called upon to be the vessel of God's love for someone else right now. Someone that you are aware of that is feeling that disconnection from God is feeling that um, lethargy that I mentioned, just feeling like, oh, I'm so tired of all of this. And even though we're feeling some hope, um, people are even, they're a little surprised at their, how, um, how tired they are. And so I think there's a lot to process with that. And I just want to remind you that we have each other, even though we're not together in person as often as we'd want to be. And we're getting to the place pretty soon that we will be able to be. But that we are vessels of God's love for one another. And so don't forget that. Just make sure that you are aware of that as you interact with other people. He also talks about the rituals um, of the church and rituals in our lives that are meaningful. And one of the rituals that is, I have shared with you many times that is most meaningful to me is singing out of our United Methodist hymnal, which we have been doing during Wednesday Connections every week. And so today, I have cho chosen the song, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. It is on page 89. And I invite you now, if you have a hymnal, to turn to page 89 and let us sing together. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, heaven, earth, and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy.
divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus with the morning stars begin. Love divine is reigning o'er us, binding all within its span. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. I don't know about you, but I had a powerful experience of ritual in singing this as I heard the organ and the piano and all of your voices that we would typically be singing together in person. I heard it all as we were singing this hymn. I look forward to seeing you again soon, um, and I just, I really wish you all of the love and grace that the sunshine is providing today, and to remember that you are a vessel of God's love for others, and that we are all in this together, and that we are getting closer, so much closer to being together in person on a more regular basis, and that, my friends, can create all kinds of hope for our future. We'll see you again very soon and take very good care of one another. It's been great to be with you and I really, really miss you. Bye-bye.